All right, guys, before we transition to anything else, I want to hop in. We've got some breaking news here. Robert, you may want to get ready to take your victory lap here. It's a press release from the Prefontaine Classic. They've announced two athletes are confirmed for the 100 meters. One of them is Sha'Carri Richardson, the world champion. The other one, Noah Lyles, also the world champion. He's been confirmed. He's running the Diamond League final next weekend at Eugene. The first lines of the press release, I wasn't going to do it. And then I read Robert Johnson's editorial on Let's Run.com. And I said, Robert knows what's best for my career. I'm going to Eugene, baby. Okay, he didn't actually say that. But this is good news. Noah Lyles is running the Diamond League final next weekend. One of the biggest track stars in the U.S. will be at one of the biggest track meets in the U.S. Wait, what, what, what? He announced last week his season was over and we wrote an editorial criticizing him and Robert said, I'm going to try to change his opinion. But like, was there any social media pressure or what? Like, I'm actually shocked by this. I'm not giving Robert credit for this, but John, how did this happen? Like, what's going there on? There was social media pressure. Robert tagged him from the Let's Run.com account saying, come run the Diamond League final. Now, I do find this whole thing a little hypocritical because Robert is telling Noah Lyles to go run the Diamond League final. It's one of the biggest meets in the United States. It's in the U.S. for the first time ever. Yet Robert himself is not attending this meet. But what I don't, I don't know if it, <laughs> I highly doubt Robert's editorial had anything to do with Noah's decision making. But it's a great for the sport that he's going to be in Eugene. Well, what a victory lap I need to be taking. I mean, one of the most popular threads I was ridiculed on last week. Noah Lyles just announced he's skipping the Diamond League final. I'm trying to convince him to change his mind. I did tweet at him. I said, Noah, there's nothing stopping you from going to, on Good Morning America and Fashion Week while tapering down for the Diamond League final. This is a big deal. Let's do it. Then he put up a, a tweet a few days later. He's like, maybe I've got one more 100 in him. And now he's going. I don't know if I had anything to do with it. I'm thrilled that he's doing it. And I think it's great for the sport. This could have been brilliant j job by Noah. Like someone's like, he's just not getting the appearance fee that he wants for Nike for, for the Prefontaine Classic. They probably don't want to pay into this guy what he's worth. He's going to hold out and now he's getting it. So well done, Noah. You deserve the money if you got more money. I'm glad you're doing it. Maybe my pressure worked. I don't know. But this is the perfect segue because I want to talk about Noah. I've written extensively about him. Look, in April when he lost to a high school in the 100 meters, the odds that he would be the 100 meter champion looked very remote. In July, when was USA? Is June or July, John? July 6th. Sorry, the race was on July 7th. In July, when he was third at USA, it looked very remote that he'd be the 100 meter champion. Then all of a sudden, we got to Worlds and he's a 100 meter champion. Now it looks very remote. Anybody who said that he's never going to win Olympic gold in his career looks like a fool. And, and that person. Ended up being the odds that that person ends up being correct don't look very good for me. Let's be honest. It does look like Noah Lyles, if you're right now predicting golds for next year, he'll probably win one. He's certainly the favorite in the 200. The 100 is still wide open to me. There's a lot of good young Jamaicans. I'm not discounting Fred Curley either, but there's a ton of good Jamaicans. God, they could just go one through six, it's possible. But I'm not backing down. I published a piece and I just said, like, the reason why I said Noah Lyles, I didn't say he's never going to win a gold medal because I didn't think he was a good runner. I just thought, like, he missed his window of opportunity. He would have won in 2020. COVID canceled it. He was depressed. He got antidepressants, et cetera. He wasn't in the same form in 2021. And then time passes you by. It's very similar to me about what happened in the men's 1500. Timothy Chariot, right? We all agree. Would have won in 2020 but he didn't. And then there's a young phenom coming up behind him. And now that young female, Jakob Binger Brinson is there to, to take over the event. The same thing is true in the 200. Like Arian Knighton is this guy that's younger, faster at a younger age. And despite what happened this year at Worlds, nothing changes the fact that Arian Knighton is still there. And I said in this article, like go back to 2007. There was a young, lanky 200 meter specialist with a 10.03 P 100 meter PB who just gotten silver in the 200 at worlds. Nobody was saying he's going to become an Olympic legend next year. He's going to win everything. He's going to be the greatest sprinter of all time. 
But that's what happened to Usain Bolt. Ari Knighton is a 200 meter specialist with a 1004 PB, 100 meter PB. Just got second at Worlds. Like tall and lanky. It, it's the exact same thing. Admittedly, he's a year younger than Bolt. So it makes me nervous that he may not break through next year. Maybe it's 2025 when he breaks through and gets on top of the event. But there also was this kind of a stagnation period for Bolt between 2004 and 2007. Knighton's kind of had that the last year. So what do you think of my analogy, guys? I kind of like the analogy. And you know our rule here. I don't like Bolt comparisons. But when you're already in Knighton, the Bolt comparison is actually apt, at least what they've done at the younger level. I mean, Usain Bolt was one of the greatest phenoms in the history of track and field. He won World Juniors when he was 15. Arian Knighton was fourth at the Olympics when he was 17 and ran 1949 at 18. So they're, you know, similar talent levels. And yeah, I don't think your comparison is totally crazy, but you've, you're basically, you're asking, you're relying on Knighton making the same sort of leap in 2024 that Usain Bolt did in 2008. And very few people in the history of our sport have made a leap that high and to that level even as a phenom like Bolt. It, it's just, from, to say, oh, he's going to replicate that, I don't think so. There's maybe like, maybe there's a 20% chance he does that, but I think, I don't, you know, odds are against it, even though we are talking about a monster talent here. The other thing is, there are two things, though. One, I think Knighton did a good job this year. That is something he didn't do last year. He got his best race out of himself in the World Championship final. He ran a little slower than he did in, Eugene, but last year he ran a lot slower than he did in the season opening. He ran 1949, never ran faster. This year, he managed the season better. Second in Budapest. Second in Zurich. He wasn't you know that far off Noah Lyles in the Zurich Diamond League. Like He's running his best later in the season, which is a good sign for Arian Knighton. You also pointed out, okay, the gap closed. You said Knighton closed the gap, and I was like, no, no, no. Knighton didn't close all of the gap. Knighton ran five hundredths faster in the final this year. Some of the gap was closed by Noah Lyles running the hundred, and he was more tired for the two hundred final. That's why he only ran nineteen point five two as opposed to nineteen point three one. So Noah will have the hundred two hundred double next year, and Arian will not have the hundred most likely unless he goes full bolt and starts running the hundred as well. So that is an area you know if if Noah Lyles is a little tired out from the hundred rounds and he's what only running 194 or 195 I think that could be a range we've seen Knighton run 194 you could see him get to that level but yeah I'm I'm still going Noah yeah the gap that I, John's referring to is in 2022 Knighton lost to Lyles by 0.49 at Worlds this year he lost to him by 0.23 so he improved by 0.26 with the gap narrowed by 0.26 if it, if it narrows another 0.26 he's ahead next year so I, I am, to be honest, uh, a few things worry about me. One is the age is a little bit younger. Two, also, while he's tall and lanky, he's not as tall as Usain Bolt. Like, according to Wikipedia, like, Bolt's 6'6", six, six, he's 6'3". Six, so I can see why it would take Bolt a little bit longer to get the coordination and everything down. All right. Weldon was mad earlier that we hadn't we'd been talking for a long time, hadn't gotten to Eddie Wiley. 